Christian Hospitals has already said to the group that um, she's heard so many good things from the community about how happy they are the practice is here. And I know I hear good things all over the community about Dr. Jeff Dominguez and Dr. Adam Kenninger. And Dr. Kenninger's wife came to Rotary a couple weeks ago and talked about there what she's go. doing in our community. So we are so glad that these two families are here and that they bring so much. Um, I think they bring lots of good spirit, but they also bring lots of care for a lot of people, and we're very thankful that you're here. We're glad the Chamber Group is gathered for the ribbon cutting, and uh, I usually we ask uh, the folks of the Chamber or any of the visitors if they would like to say a few words, and we like that the staff is here too. Come on over, ladies. You're part of this well, also. Yeah, be a part of it. And would anyone from the Chamber like to say anything before we have the Dr. Kinninger and Dr. Dominguez? If they have something to add? Shy people, they're not usually shy. <laughs> I'm Steve Brown. As a member of the volunteer of the chamber, I'd just like to thank you for being here and just let you know that we're all about helping businesses be as good as they can be. And if there's anything at all we can do to help you guys, um, just please call on us. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else? Rod, want to add anything? I can't do two things at once here. <laughs> I understand. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I asked Amanda this morning what history she had on the the new practice, and uh, she said, "Well, Bobby's on it." She's doing the research. <laughs> and what I was curious about was how many offices you've opened for the last two or three years. I know Sugar Hill, and I know uh, McDowell had it just 70, mm -hmm. and you've already opened Glenwood. Mm -hmm. So this yes. is number four, or are there more? Right, and then we have the orthopedic practices in the medical park. We have the surgical practice that's also there and a wound clinic as well as uh, ENT physicians come down, ears, nose, and throat from Asheville to do clinic two days a week and they've been in that space for okay. 20 years. Well, I was <clears throat> just thinking about the, the growth. Um, I don't know that there's any company here locally that could match that kind of investment. So that's, that's really important to our community and especially uh, given that health services is the silver lining uh, as far as job creation and, and uh, growth uh, nationwide and I think we're really fortunate that these services are being added you know, not just to the economy but to to people uh, the access that people have to good care so it's it's really a remarkable thing I, I appreciate what the hospital is doing well, we appreciate the support from the community and we've got a dynamic duo here as well as in the Glenwood practice when you go there but our goal is to have passionate, compassionate physicians and healthcare team to deliver care to the community. Uh, we're, we're proud to be part of the team and again the goal is to have a healthier community and to support the community and I think we've got the right leaders here and these two physicians coming on board. Not just for NEBO but for our medical staff and our medical community as a whole. So we are extremely proud to have them here and they are extremely focused on making us a healthier community. And I thought it was great to know that you two guys were together in Ohio. So you come here already knowing each other. A team. Yes. How about that? So I think that's just good a real staff. added bonus. Yeah. Staff is awesome. I mean, uh, we have an outstanding staff. And uh, we thank the hospital. We, we look around and we sat down and said that there's no way two young physicians coming into practice could have a facility this beautiful and this amount of resources coming into practice. And it really allows us to give the quality of care that we want to be able to provide for our patients, which is top of the line. And uh, we thank GM for building a, a beautiful facility for us and the hospital for their support and our staff because they make us go around. If we didn't have their support, we certainly would be spinning our wheels. So uh, it's been a community effort and we appreciate everyone who's here. Well, on behalf of our families as well, we both live in, in Marion and, and not just from the business side of things, but from the whole community, we've just been welcomed across the board, so we appreciate it. So. Absolutely. Especially coming from the north, we're a little nervous about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're acclimating okay. Rachel already likes the weather. We talked about the good weather. <laughs> she does. She does. She's excited. I wanted to add, too, that I, that I appreciate how the hospital tries to reinvest in the local economy. So you're using a local contractor. Yeah, we, we would like to thank you for that. That's one thing I would, would say from our standpoint. We've got to do three of these now. And we've been very fortunate that local uh, people, not just our company, but we've been using a lot of other local trades, and it is a reinvestment. We're very thankful for that. 
we really enjoyed opening these three and I hope we get to open 10 more. <laughs> <laughs> they are, I, I'm very proud of the buildings themselves. I think they're beautiful buildings and I think the hospital's done a great job picking out the design. And the thing that I like the best about them is if you follow them, Sugar Hill, Glenwood and here, you're seeing a uh, pattern. You're seeing uh, some name recognition. Even before we finished Glenwood, I had a lot of people asking me, you know, is that a mission building? It looks like a mission building. And so I know from, not just from our standpoint, but from Sonia's as well, that's something you're sure you want. You know, that's a good looking building. So we appreciate that. And that is a feather in our cap as well. So we're very pleased to be a part of that. And we thank you for the opportunity. Very good. I'm sure that Nebo Elementary School is really glad to be right next to us. How could that be any better? All right, Rod, are we ready for the ribbon? We're ready. Okay. Always ready. Right. Are you ready? Hold on. One more cup. Hey. All right. John, get up here. Up here right right okay. In. Don't cut it yet. I can't see Bobby, can't see Bobby at all. She Bobby, Bobby, room up here, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby get up front and kneel under the scissors. Three, two, one. Come on, Bobby. Get up front and kneel under the scissors. Three, two, one. Are we good? I'm losing my part. Cut! No, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay, one, two, three, cut. Yeah. Right. Nice thing about family practice, you know, is we, we see you do everything. So we're trying to incorporate, um, you know, some things for the kids, just like to get some more toys and stuff like that. So one of my uh, ideas that we'd like to do is have this wall be dedicated for the Nebo uh, elementary art students. And I like to just have like a rotating party because we just constantly display the artwork. I think we run through. Yeah. Come on back. Big refrigerator. Yeah, that's right. And I don't know. I don't give your keys. How are you? My keys. I do. How are you doing? Good. I do. Can I show them the farm? Yeah. Thank you. So the building was built with a capacity of a full retail pharmacy in place. So that is one of the things that. Uh, as far as no lights you can peek in, but you know, so that room will be dedicated to our pharmacy. One of the things that uh, Mission is trying to do is have pharmacies on location at their outpatient primary care sites, and that does a myriad of things. One, convenience for the patient. I mean, first off, being a Nebo, it's great to have a doctor in your backyard. You just have to drive to town 15 minutes in any direction to get your medicine to really save you any time. So that's number one, convenience for patient. But quality of care goes up, having a clinical pharmacist on staff that can do diabetic education, Coumadin checks, um, med discharge, you know, medication discharge medications. The hospital, all sorts of stuff. And so the quality goes up, the, the, the satisfaction goes up, and so that's one of the pieces that Mission's really rolling out. They've done it at one clinic on Vista in Nashville, and it's been very successful. Linwood is set up to do the same type of uh, setup, and then we have that as well. So hopefully, I, I've been telling people within the first year, if we can get there, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. That's so, where we're going. Yeah. I, you know, so we'll be able to do full full radiology capacity. We already hired our x-ray technician. He'll be uh, helping us with that. Uh, she'll be here full time. So um, we'll be able to do, you know, minor fracture care, any kind of orthopedic problem, chest x-rays, you know, diagnose. I mean, how great is that? You got pneumonia, come here, yeah, come through the hospital, there. wait in a long waiting room. Go get your medicine. Get your medicine. Go for it. Come back. So we're hoping that'll be up and running in the next couple of months. Anything you expect for the full pharmacy or a pharmacy a lab, I should say, lab draws, immunizations, full scope pediatric immunizations, TB tests, you know, basically your standard lab. So nice big patient uh, accessible restroom, standard check-in area. And you can get through there, you can see, you know, the nice thing I like about this building, it was built with the uh, intent to teach the which is nice. Short so you know, plenty of space for the front desk staff. Back here in the front of the area, very nice efficient flow because pretty much every room is exclusively to the nursing station. It looks like you have that one room at the end of the hall, you're you know walking so much farther to get to. So, uh, ten patient exam rooms. Um, Dr. Kennedy usually works out of those three. I take these three. We have a nice large corner room that'll be our, we're going to make it our pediatric room and uh, decorate for well, kids and things that, that way, yeah, kid, it comes in that is. Not sick and just here for a regular checkup thing doing there and not going in some place where everyone's been with the flu or whatnot. One of the uh, other thoughts we've been talking about is I'd like to actually to decorate because some of the rooms are decorated right now. Uh, basically, lease out all the 
patient rooms to local artists. So in my mind, I have 10 local artists and say, here's your room, you get exam room run, do whatever you want. Photography, artwork, whatever, and then just put a little plaque as a local artist and then, you know, business card. So, you know, good way to support yeah. artists in the community. And you could probably do that through MACO or through the chamber. Mm -hmm. That's one other thing we're kind of, I think we're, we're, we're kicking around. So, um, room's a very good size. Uh, I can't hurt myself with both uh, videos. We do some osteopathic manipulation and six of the ten rooms um, have special, you can see them through there, um, exam tables that are built for osteopathic manipulation. So they rise up and down fully. Um, I can show you what. That's um, Doctor of Osteopathy is open. Yep, exactly. Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. Which it's your uh, MDs also? Yeah. So we're DOs, so it's a long story. About a, we've got about a two-hour lecture we could give you sometime if you're interested. But long story short, there's two types of doctors in America, DOs and MDs. Uh, it's, it's a very regional thing. So down here, <clears throat> historically, there haven't been very many DOs, but it's, a, it's the fastest-growing sector of medicine in America. Uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina just opened up a school. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina is getting a school. At Campbell and, University, oh, Campbell. starting oh, next year. Starting next year. It's going to be the first class, 2013. Virginia yeah. Tech has a school. There's a school in Tennessee, school in Kentucky, Georgia. school in Georgia. So it's, it's, it's growing more in this area. We both went to Ohio, the Ohio Osteopathic School at Ohio University. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, we do everything an MD can do, plus we do osteopathic manipulation, which is kind of a hodgepodge. We can do kind of what chiropractors do, we can do what massage therapists do, we can do what physical therapists do, and mm -hmm. some of our own techniques are kind of unique to our practice. Um, it's been successfully used in the treatment of lots of, lots of things. So people think typically all you do manipulation you know, I have back pain, I come in, or I have neck pain, mm -hmm. but it's been used to decrease hospital hospital stays for pneumonia, it's used for people that have abdominal problems, it's been used to help with post-op ileus where the bowels won't move, so um, we use it in treatment of COPD and asthmatics, so there's lots of things that you can do to impact the body through manual medicine in addition to all the pharmaceutical stuff that we use that traditional bees would use. So it's a nice extra tool to have in your toolbox and anything you can do without medicine, you know, a lot of people... So it would be, it'd be uh, otherwise like a family practice? Or exactly, it's a complete or... comprehensive family practice. Okay. You name it, we do it. The only thing we don't do is we don't deliver babies. And we see one day olds, hundred year olds, everything between women's health, um, well people, sick people, you know, basically what we like to say is our desire is to be the first point of contact for your medical care for your whole family. You know, so if you have a dermatologic problem, should I see a dermatologist? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. we can, nine times out of ten, we can handle it. Mm -hmm. and if we, handle it we can do skin biopsies here, we can do all kinds of things. Well, sure. We can do knee injections, shoulder injections, hips, you know, all sorts of things. Okay. Yeah. So, we got a, a bullpen office, a, a, a universal office for the there's space for the three providers there currently right now we're the two full-time physicians here john riser our physician assistant is splitting time between us and the glenwood practice okay. our vision at some point would be to be busy enough that he could hunker down and stay at one location full-time and we could bring on another physician assistant yeah. um ideally it'd be nice if we could accommodate with a female here because some patients do you know take up a female provider that would be our long-term goal um, and of course our goal, sky's the limit, we'd love to grow this practice to have, mm. I think we could accommodate up to four providers up to four here. providers and have some extended hours and maybe some weekend times and things, it's just, that's, good that's our goal to get there. Yeah. That's our goal to get there, yeah. As of right now, we're, we're just standard 8 to 5, Monday to Friday, but down the road we'd like to be extended early morning, late evening, weekend. At them, Saturdays.